one finished project and a lot more in progress. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, welcome back to Karcher Makes. I'm Andrea, and this is the place where we like to talk about all the crafty things. Uh, mostly knitting, sometimes crochet, but today we do have some weaving and spinning to talk about, so that'll be exciting if you're interested in that. That'll be closer to the end. Um, otherwise, we're just here to talk about some progress on some current projects. I do have a finished object. I do have quite a few whips going. A uh, little bit of updates on some of those whips for you if you've been following along. Uh, if you haven't been following along, feel free to go back and watch some of the prior videos and subscribe to get some new ones. So let's start with the struggle that is Karcher and color work. <laughs> so I have a prior video that talks all about improving color work and I I will say it again here. I, I am certainly not the expert of anything and I try to be resourceful in finding other people who have more expertise to learn from. And for color work, stranded color work in particular, uh, I can't recommend Roxanne Richardson enough. She has a channel here on YouTube. She has a lot of great videos. She has a playlist around two color stranded work and two color stranded color work in particular. And uh, I, I, I tried to improve my efforts with color work and I did improve to some extent, but these are definitely definitely not perfect and I could uh, probably use some more practice. So just to start, these are my finished uh, Grinch's Heart Socks and the pattern is by Chit Chat Knits. The yarn is Fangirl Fibers. This was a Christmas Eve project, bundle, box, bag, kit, whatever you want to call it. It came with the project bag, the yarn, some stitch markers, the pattern, like the whole nine yards. Um, so the struggle that I had, and I talked a little bit about this in a prior video as well, when the first sock, which is here, um, when I was doing these hearts, I was not keeping the tension on my floats loose enough, so they are very, very tight. And I also steam block everything. I steam block these and it did loosen up a little bit, but it's still pretty tight. They, they're, they're wearable, like of course they're wearable and they're gorgeous. Like look at these colors together. It's kind of giving me Lily Pulitzer vibes with the green and the pink and they're gonna be perfect for Valentine's Day, which is coming up. So I do love the socks, um, but after making this first one, I understood what I did wrong and then I tried to compensate for it on the second one. Now, if you look at these kind of closely next to each other, you can see like it's not the camera. I significantly loosened the tension on the floats on the second sock and you can see the difference in size here. Same size needle, obviously it's the same yarn. My dogs are barking. I hope you can't hear that. Anyway, um, same time as yarn, but I significantly loosened up my tension and I honestly think I overcompensated because one, look how big these are compared to this one, and two, now this one is very loose. So I, I need to practice more to get to that like Goldilocks like situation with my tension because this one's too tight this one's too loose. I, I need to kind of be somewhere in the middle. But that said, they're beautiful socks. Beautiful, beautiful socks. I love them. Um, and the good thing with color work socks is that with the floats, uh, it basically makes like a double thick fabric that makes them really, really warm, which is fun and nice. Um, would I make color work socks again? <sighs> Y'all. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I do have another color work project on the needle, stranded color work project that we're going to talk about in a second. But because with socks, fit is so critical with 
the, you know, the leg around the calf and then your heel and then the foot part. And I use three different needles on this, a one, a one and a half and a two. Um, and again, nothing that the pattern did wrong. This is completely a me thing. And it's my lack of experience with stranded color work, especially in a sock. But um, I, I just don't know if I would want to mix the two things together. Now, that, all that to say, who knows what'll happen. Maybe tomorrow I see amazing like color work sock pattern that just is everything that I need in my life and I do it anyway. And hopefully I do it better that time. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if I will intentionally seek out doing more color work socks. But so there they are. We learn from our mistakes here. We reflect and next time we may do better. We hopefully will do better. That's always my goal. Um, yeah, so those are those Grinch's heart socks, chit chat notes, and girl fibers. Next up, another color work project. This one's going better, I'll say <laughs> better. Um, this is the Yule Knot Mittens, and the pattern is by Skane Deer. She also has a YouTube channel here, and I am, if I flip this around, you can see where the thumb hole is. I have maybe 10 or 15 more rows to finish off the top here, but these are coming along quite nicely. They fit well. I think they will be gorgeous once I block them. Uh, they're kind of bunched up right here, but look at this little reindeer. Look at this little guy. How cute is he? He's just trotting along. There's the little cabin. Oh, and I, I don't recall who I was watching. It was somebody here on YouTube, and I don't remember who said it now, but these are called Norwegian Stars, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Somebody fact check me. Fact check me in the comments. I know people love correcting, um, but I'm pretty sure they're called Norwegian Stars. So they are neither a snowflake nor poinsettia, which were the two previous options that had been discussed. So those are in progress. The one is in progress. Um, I just kind of pick these up when I'm in the mood for something a little bit more challenging with the color work. And you can see though the, especially on this side, and of course it's getting all tangled up, but on this side, you can see how those white stitches are popping on the blue background because I'm holding the yarn correctly. And again, Roxanne Richardson, uh, thank you so much for your content and your tutorials because it truly is helping me become a better knitter and making these mittens so beautiful. I mean, come on guys, look, <laughs> they're so pretty. Okay, I'm back. UPS came and my two little Yorkies who both have Napoleon complexes were going nuts and I'm pretty sure you could probably hear it. So I'm back and we're going to talk about the End Times cardigan progress that I've made since the last time we chatted. So this is again End Times Cardigan by Amy Young Gunderson. Technically this is a color work project as well because it's in Tarja. And uh, one of the big things that I learned doing this is how to correctly manage the two strands for the Intarja. So basically Intarja is really about crisscrossing the threads or yarns so that you don't leave a gap when you change the color on the needles, right? So you cross them both in the front and the back. There's a very particular way you have to do it when it's garter stitch knitted flat. Um, I did watch a video and I don't recall who I watched. There was a couple different ones. Uh, look, uh, YouTube search is great. Go, you can go search it, but um, if, if I can find it, I'll, I'll put it down below if I can find the exact one that I used, but, um, just a matter of crisscrossing the strands properly. And you can see here, since I'm in, in the progress of this one square, I really should have planned better. 
but when I get back over to this kind of green color, I will need to kind of crisscross the working thread with the next working thread. And when I was initially doing this on my little kind of swatch practice square, uh, I wasn't just crossing the threads like this. I was actually like twisting them around one another as if I was spinning yarn. I guess I thought I had to do it super, like super, super tight, but it was too much. It, it made a weird bump on the front of the square. It looked terrible. I watched a video and now I'm doing better. And really that's the theme, right? If you need help, either seek out a resource or ask questions of somebody. And, and typically, at least in my case, I have some really good local yarn stores to ask questions of if I need to, but for the most part, I, I, I really do rely on YouTube. Um, there's usually somebody, if you, if you think of it, somebody's already thought of it and somebody's already made a video of it. There's very few things that haven't been covered yet. But this is the progress and I have, I'm starting my fifth row and this is the bottom back of the garment. Um, I think I have to do one more row for a total of six before I start adding in addition the kind of side pieces that will eventually become the sleeve. But um, my current progress out of all these squares, I've not repeated a single color yet. Um, I think once I'm done this fifth row, I will have to start repeating. Um, I do have, as you can see, a lot of leftovers, a lot of scraps, but uh, I think I'm going to have to start repeating just for the sake of the amount of yarn that I have and wanting to keep this light light dark, light dark situation happening with the color management. So, and, and again, I talked quite a bit about this in my last video and I'll link that and you can go take a look. But uh, all in all, I love working on this. It's coming along quite slowly. I am only, I'm really trying to do two squares a day. That's my general goal. Some days I only get one done. Some days I get three done, but I'm really just trying to, keep work on it consistently. I don't want this to become a forever whip and I, probably the next video is going to be all about forever whips. Let's talk about that because y'all I got a lot of forever whips and one of my goals this year is to finish at least one of them. Just one. Just one. Just finish one and then it's no longer a forever whip. It's a project that's been finished. We will see but I don't want this to become something that just never gets finished. So slowly but surely, we're, we're trucking along on this one. These colors are just so pretty. And I'm using various advents, various leftovers, random mini skeins that I've collected across, you know, the 10 years that I've been knitting. Uh, swaps with people, what have you. Like this is just all in all in kind of very similarly similarly to how I approached my my dirt square cozy memories blanket kind of the same deal here except you're doing two color squares instead of just solid color squares um that said if you wanted to do just a solid color square instead of the two color intarsia squares you can do that it's flexible that way but yeah love this and this is totally my aesthetic and vibe bright, crazy, chaotic. I know that like beige, neutral, soft, like that's a whole aesthetic. That's a whole vibe right now. It's not me. <laughs> it isn't like, this is me. This is me. Like if you look me up in the dictionary, I'm probably wearing something chaotic and crazy like this. And I love it. Cause that's who I am. I do have two more log cabin squares that I finished. And if you are new here, 
I had this idea to knit a blanket out of all the hand dyed yarn from dyers that I love, whether they're local, um, just leftovers that I have, uh, my row one minis, uh, whatever the case may be. But each square I envisioned being one dyer's worth of yarn, right? So this is one of the current ones that I have. And this pattern, it's a tutorial by, uh, her name is Stacy, Very Pink Knits here on YouTube. And th these are so easy to make and they use such little yarn. Like each one, I think the most is like four grams at any given point. Um, but this one is uh, some leftovers from Rising Tide Fiber Company. And she's a local-ish to me dyer. She's in Maryland, I'm in PA, it's super close. Um, but these are the leftovers from my gnomes that I made at Christmas time and from socks that I made over the summer during Nitty Natty's Sock Week. That's this one, Jubilee, Jellyfish Jubilee. And this is from a pair of socks that I made while I was on vacation called Look to the Rainbow. And yeah, so that is my Rising Tide Fiber Company Square. She is all done and ready to go. The next one is from Wool and Vinyl, and these are all just random middies that I picked up at Frederick Fiber Fest. So I think a couple of these actually have names, but the way she does her dyeing, I'm not sure she repeats. So like this one in the middle, it's uh, John from the Beatles series that she did, uh, but I don't think she repeats it. It's like a one-time deal from what I understand, but the rest were just mini one-of-a-kinds randos, but yeah. So I finished two more squares for that, and eventually when I have enough, these will all get seamed together into a nice little blanket. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it yet. Maybe I'll put a border on them, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll sew them together, maybe I'll crochet them together. We'll see, there's no rush, there's no rush. But I love, I love how these turned out. Like, I'm so happy with these, and here's the, little baby stack that I have so far of them. These are just more uh, passion knits, also from Maryland. That's all their yarn. Cesium, I wanna say they're from Virginia. I'm gonna call that local. Anything within the DMV, Southern PA region, I call it local. Uh, yeah. And then this is uh, Froggit, Froggit Fibers, which is in PA. So yeah, love these. This is a fun project to work on too. They work so, work up super fast and just something easy when you need something mindless and you have all these little tiny bits of yarn left. Exhibit A, just, you know, you put them all together and then eventually have a blanket one day. Well, let's talk about weaving. I have finally, so, just a little kind of recap if you're new here. If you're not, uh, then you kind of know the backstory. So last summer I took a beginning weaving class at Redstone Glen. They're local to me. They're like 35, 40 minutes away. Um, and they offer a lot of weaving, a lot of spinning classes, a couple other like kind of things too. But I took a week long beginning weaving class. They teach you on a four shaft floor loom and I loved it so much I bought a loom because uh, that's what I do. I go head first deep dive into anything crafty so now I have a loom. Um, I actually got the loom in I want to say it was like October, November time frame. I immediately put it together, warped it up for some dish towels and then it just took me so long to just get the time to sit down and do the weaving part of it. Like it was warped, everything was good, all the designs were designed and I just needed to do it. So last weekend we were snowed in 
Uh, we got like eight inches of snow, I think last week, total-ish, between the couple days that it snowed. So I had nowhere to be, not that I ever have anywhere to be, but I really had nowhere to be. So I just sat down and I knocked it out. And this is the resulting fabric. So these are going to be, once it's actually finished, this is just the fabric for now, this is not done. Um, but this is the resulting fabric, and these are going to be dish towels. Um, the yarn or thread, as the weavers like to call it, is 8-2 cotton, and which is perfect for dish towel fabric. It's absorbent. You can throw it in the washer, throw it in the dryer. It's very resilient. And... What I did here is three different kind of patterns, if you will. So in weaving, they're called a draft, not a pattern, but you know. Um, this is just plain weave here. And I did uh, three, four, co four colors? One, two, three, four, right? Four colors, primaries and a white. And I mainly wanted to do that to see how the colors played on one another. So when you're weaving in plain weave, you're you're effectively over, under, over, under, just like the pot holders that I feel like everybody's made as a kid, right? Over, under, over, under, and that's effectively what you're doing here, just with teeny tiny thread. Um, and I, I just wanted to see what how the colors change when they overlaid one another. So here, where it's red and yellow together, it looks a little orange. Here, I mean, it's not green, but it's kind of giving like a green vibe. And I just find it really interesting how the colors visually blend. So that is the first one. And these things are huge. Um, they will shrink up significantly because they are obviously cotton. But And I'll insert some video close up of it. So that's just a plain weave over, under, over, under. This one, I decided to go a little bit more, and actually, yeah. This one, I decided to go a little bit more sort of detailed on, and this is called a twill? Let me look at my notes. This is called a balanced tweed with vertical herringbone stripes, like I was ever going to remember that. So you can see here the little diagonals that's a twill and then these little v's are a herringbone and then for this one and by the way again i'm not the expert of anything i'm a very 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 beginner weaver so if you're like an experienced weaver and you're looking at these you're probably like girl a mess <laughs> but it's my it's my first solo project right so I'm learning, I'm learning, we'll do better next time. So this one is called a two by two high twill. And what that does is it makes these little sort of like chevron, let me get my face out so it'll focus. These little kind of chevron stripes, which I think is amazing and beautiful. So yeah, these are, these are arrow ridden. They're gonna be dish towels. Like I'm literally gonna be using these to wipe up messes. So they don't have to be perfect, but I do want them to be pretty and they are. And so, like I said, this is the fabric straight from the loom. Now, what I need to do next is I will be zigzag stitching on my sewing machine, all the edges in between kind of the towels so like this is a separator section that'll get zigzagged and then down here this will get zigzagged and then same thing down here this will get zigzagged and then I will wash them I will dry them in the machines again they got to stand up to real life here so those will get washed in the machines I will cut them apart and then I will hem them and these are so easy to hem you just it's just a folded over hem you just go bloop bloop and then run a stitch across. Couldn't be easier. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in seeing the progress on these, stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll be talking about those in a future video. But that is my first 
solo warp handwoven fabric on my own loom and I could not be prouder of it and I think they're gorgeous. I don't know what I'm going to make next. I really want to make a rug. I have made a rug before on a rigid heddle loom. Uh, the dogs love sitting on it and laying on it. It's like their favorite thing ever. Um, but I don't know if I want to make a rug next or I was thinking maybe like a wrap like a shawl type wrap. Basically this in a nicer fabric that I can kind of wear as, you know, an accessory, a scarf or a shawl or something like that. So we will see and I will definitely share whatever that turns out to be. So up next, uh, I do have a spinning project that's been in progress for also quite some time. Um, I think I started this in October or November, probably. Um, so this is the first of what will be two bobbins. The other one's still on the wheel and I've been slowly working my way through it. But this is a uh, fiber from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. It's a mixed, a mixed BFL, I'm pretty sure. I can, I'll have to go back and look and correct myself and cross here if I'm wrong but this is a mixed BFL and it's unraveling as I'm holding it so I should probably stop doing that let me get my face out and the colorway is called grab your flannel so what I'm attempting here and like I keep saying I'm not a spinning expert I've never take I, I have I did take one spinning class at my local yarn store like at least 10 years ago probably. I feel like it's been a while. Um, but my plan with this is that it's going to be a two ply and I, I'm i not good at measuring like is this going to be a fingering weight? Is it going to be a DK weight? Like I have no idea. I don't know. It, it when, I, when it comes to the spinning, whatever it turns out is whatever it is. I don't intentionally spin. And as is the common theme, I do want to get better at that. I want to become more intentional with my spinning. I want to be able to spin for projects and patterns that I already have. My dream spinning project is to get fleece and like do the whole fleece thing, right? Like card it spin it, knit it, and then just knit like a really beautiful sweater. Like that's my dream project. But so yeah, this is the first of what will be two bobbins. Uh, grab your flannel, mix BFL from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. And oh, I'm, I should mention, I'm doing, I, I'm attempting to do a fractal spin. So what a fractal spin is, is when you split the fiber, um, the way that you split the fiber and spin it and then ply it back together, it leads to the colors overlapping in different sections so that they don't stay similar. So in some cases they may be, or some cases they may not. And I'm probably doing a terrible job <laughs> at explaining this. But um, so when I had the braid, and if I have a picture of the braid, I'll insert it here so you can kind of see what it started as. But I took the braid and I split it lengthwise and half. I took one half and I split that in half again. That became this bobbin. This bobbin here, focus. And then I took the second half and I'm pointing at it like you can see it, it's in front of me. I took the second half and I split that into four. And then I'll spin those end to end. So then when you take the two that is this and the four that is this, the colors will interplay a lot more. And it's just a way of breaking up the color. And I know that barber polling is either, it's very polarizing, right? Either you love it or you hate it. I personally love it. I know a lot of people don't, but I'm probably going to end up with a lot of bar barber polling out of it. So really excited to see how that turns out. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, my goal is to just spend like maybe 15 minutes, a couple days a week while I'm eating lunch or drinking my coffee in the morning so that I can get it done eventually. And then we'll see what it turns out to be. Um, I did 
use some of my hand swan. So I've never, don't say never, I've worked with my hand spun two times. I made a pair of mittens, uh, like out of my very probably second spin that I ever spun, maybe my third. I knitted a pair of mittens, and then I, in, in the class that I took at Redstone Glen, I wove a scarf with my hand spun. And that's really the only two times I've ever used hand spun yarn. And the rest is just sitting in a basket downstairs and it's not doing anything. And I wanna be able to use my hand spun. So I think weaving is gonna be a really good way for me to use this. So that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you maybe learned something. If nothing else, you learned that no one else expects your knitting or weaving or spinning or whatever crafty project you're working on. No one expects it to be perfect. Uh, I know we always wanna do our best. I wanna do my best, but Perfection is unattainable, so keep pressing, use your resources, try to make things better, but just know perfection's unattainable and, you know, make what you love, make what you're going to wear, make what you will enjoy, do it for the fun. So if you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, join us here to talk more about all the crafty things, and we'll see you next time. Happy making!